Ah, Marcus Conti reporting. You wait until you see who I got on the phone right now. Wow, I got the frog on the phone. Dr. Frog. Dr. Frog, we're going to find out if he's a real doctor, too. They call him Dr. Frog. Right, so <laughs> hey, you hear him laughing. So here's his website. Dr. Frog is is no uh, is no rookie. Let's, uh, let's check his site out. You got he's got his he changed his uh, his um, channel art there. You see 10 million, 10 million people, man. Fucking look at all these videos. It's okay if you curse to Frog. I, I I have very <laughs> very low standards. So you got a lot of there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff, and the most compelling uh, uh, number there is Mr. Frog has ninety four thousand subscribers on YouTube. So it's a it's a rather it's a rather uh, it's a phenomena, uh, for lack of a better term. And uh, so we're going to talk, but but what I why I want to talk? I have my yellow vest on right now, Frog. So uh, what I mostly want to know is I want to know Frog's view on the yellow vest movement in america if it's even possible yellow vest neon vest all right so how you doing how you doing frog i'm you know i'm good um i i look at uh the positive aspects of what it is that we may do in this country to turn it around and uh if it's neon vest or yellow vest or orange vest i mean the reason i went to neon was uh, there are people that say, well, we should do yellow vests because that's what's going on in the rest of the world. There are people that say, no, 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 we can't do that. We have to do orange vests. That would be better. And then there are others that say, oh, no, no, it's a Malga thing. we got to do red vests or right. red, white, and blue vests. And, well, what if I'm a cancer survivor? I want to wear a pink vest. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, you know, I'm a rainbow person. I, it just goes on and on. And so what I ended up saying was, look, I don't care what color vest you wear. Wear camouflage. It doesn't matter to me, but if you have a vest on and you show up with 10,000 other people and we're protesting, everybody's going to know that anybody that has a vest on is part of the group. Right. Uh, in, in the final analysis, the color doesn't matter. But isn't it funny how we as Americans can get into that argument? Like, I don't want to wear yellow. I, I, yellow, I don't look good in yellow. I, I want to wear, I want to wear pink, right? Isn't it? It yellow. is. All my wardrobe is blue and yellow. That neon yellow doesn't go well with my blue wardrobe. I, you know, it just it doesn't um, go good with anything. Like I'm looking at my reflection yeah. right now in the camera, and it it reflects the light. Yeah, it's it, horrible. It's, it stands out. <laughs> yeah. it, and you know, some people said, "Well, your vest looked like it's more green than yellow." Well, neon yellow has green in it. I don't know uh, what the uh, photogenic uh composition is but uh yeah it has it has been well so who cares uh, the point of the matter is right. uh i've made about three attempts to get people organized in some fashion over the last year since i've been on right um i i think i posted my first video in january of last year mm -hmm. uh so this is a little more than a year this is a year and a month now and I've made at least three attempts. I started that backdrop is ten that ten million unite ten million mm -hmm. has been there since day one. And wow. uh, my my idea about the unite ten million and that's what it's going to take. Uh, there's make no mistake about it. It will take ten million of us or some some significantly similar total. Right. Uh, the patriots that uh, took over the Revolutionary War, our, our founding fathers and their young men and, and some women, but mostly men, who volunteered in uh, the 1770s and into the 1780s, uh, never amounted more to more than 3% of the population. Right, right, which is where you get the 10 million from, right? Yeah. That's gotcha. yeah. At the you know at the time it was a couple hundred thousand out of uh, the total population north, and now when you take three hundred thirty million people and you multiply it times three percent, you get ten million, and that's what it's going to take. And when you look at the size of the country as opposed to thirteen colonies, and you look at the diversity that we have, we we need to be present, right? Uh, and it doesn't need to be across the board. I if we if my purpose this last few weeks is to light a spark right. and let the spark fly in the wind and where it lands, you know, if people in Cleveland take it up and 10,000 people show up in Cleveland 
and they go after their Ohio congressman and it gets newsworthy and uh, the alt news picks it up right. and people say, well, gee, in Atlanta, we could do the same thing. In Denver, we could do the same thing. In San Antonio, we could do the same thing. And then people will be heartened enough to, to take after it. But, you know, there, there are only three possibilities, as I see it left. We form a nonviolent group that actually steps up and is large enough that we cannot be ignored and people are so intimidated by us that they that we actually sway opinion and we move people backwards back into a positive direction so this craziness goes away. There is an arms insurrection, in which case the outcome is dubious at best, or we quietly, like sheep, go into submission and and permanent slavery because the new form of uh, communist fascist uh, dictatorship will include AI ships, uh, chips, uh, constant surveillance, uh, ID at all times, uh, digital accounts and and uh, cash accounts, and it will, in essence, say, if you spit on the sidewalk. We'll give you a demerit. You won't be able to do this for two weeks. If you mm -hmm. cause trouble or you show up and protest, we'll cut off your grocery account. Right. If you uh, if you do three of these things, we'll cut your accounts off everywhere. And if your house is digital, we'll take it away from you. If your car is digital, we'll sim simply shut it off and it goes to the side of the road. Uh, you know, we we are at a place now, and I'm you know. We are at a point right now where everything can be digitized. Right. Mm -hmm. Everything. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, we are less than a couple of years away from doing it. If you if you watch, um, Paul Joseph Watson did a, a one of his little five minute clips on China. Mm -hmm. Take a look at that. I mean, they're doing facial ID. Right. You China. can walk. You walk down the street, and they they can ID you just by your face uh, walking down the subway. Or any, and you any, can you can put a scarf on, and they are now reading the blood vessels in your cheeks and face, wow. and using them as a fingerprint. They don't even need to have to be able to All see. Right. Your so let's let's face. let's go. I want to I wanted to I want to ask you a couple of questions because I as I as I do this, I'm not nearly as popular uh, as you are. I have you know I have people that that follow me, but I, mostly here's here's the problem. Here's the problem that I see, and three percent of the country is not is not a lot of people. Ten million people in a country of three hundred and thirty million people is is a lot, but not really. But here's the here's the problem. There is there is there's divisions all over the place, right? Like the 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 people that call themselves uh, "Make America Great Again," the the the, the Trump. The Trump tried and true. You've got the the Hillary lovers, the pink pussy hats. You've got the the never burn, the never you know never Hillary, the Bernie or bust people are still alive. You've got this uh, the the new thing, the libertarians, right? And to get, I think what I think this, I think that what you're saying that we are moving towards a surveillance uh, uh, culture of you know, an electronic tyranny or however you want to phrase it, right? That's a given, right? Now, how do we how do we get all of these people together? Because once you say, right, you want to like, like, if you say you want to bring the pink pussy hats into the <laughs> into the fold, or you you mention Alessandro Ocasio-Cortez or Bernie Sanders, so immediately the the S word, they're socialist, they're communist, they're, right? But but at the, at the end of the day, all of these groups, and it, it, as best as I could see, all want the same thing. They want a. They want to get rid of the oligarchy. They want to oust the 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 monopoly. The the um what what you might call the deep state. The people that are choking the country. Right. Everybody wants the same thing, but it seems that there's a a a, a conflict. A a, a very very uh, calculated, um, uh, you know, social engineering that has that keeps people apart. How do we get over that? That's what I want to know. Well, Art, there are two pieces to it, as I see it. I mean, there are 22 pieces or 222 or 22,000. But the, the first thing is not everybody 
wants the oligarchs to go away. There are mm-hmm. people, uh, cl- first of all, there are people clamoring for Facebook and Google and Twitter to shut down dissenting voices. Those mm-hmm. people you're, you're not going to include in any group that looks to freedom because what they want is they want people contained. Now, at this current time, they want people contained do you think let me, let me I don't mean to interrupt. Do you think that that is just the uh, a a small group of ruling class like the the corporate media? Or do you think it's a, a a legitimate mass of people who genuinely want to want to quiet descending voices? Do you think it's let's, let's hmm? back? Let's back up. Yeah. So let's back up to the earlier question, which is uh, what what do we do with different dissenting groups? And part of it is, if you look at Saul Alinsky's list, is divide and conquer. Make people hate each other. Right. That's the first thing. Right. And it's I working. People, I have, it is. It's working perfectly. <laughs> there are people, part of the reason why I went to Neon Vest is I don't care if people are LGBT. Uh, I don't care if right. they're socialists. I don't care if, uh, if they're ultra conservatives. I don't care if they're fundamental Christians. I don't care if they're even Muslims, as long as they see the constitutional aspects of free speech, assembly, uh, the right to the, the journalist state, uh, and the Second Amendment, which is to keep and bear arms. Right. They have to... agree, mm-hmm. and they agree that everybody has the right to speak. As long as they agree that, we at least have a place where we say these are fundamental freedoms. We can disagree about what we say, but we can't disagree about our right to say. Right. And that's that's fundamental. That, so that's the first piece. The second piece has to do with who who's behind all of this, who's running this. And if you look at all kinds of areas, first of all, you've got oligarchs in uh, the military industrial complex. You've got the power systems. You've got uh, all of the uh, high tech guys owned by a few uh, corporations and owned by uh, in in monopoly and oligopolistic situations. They are owned in the background by Wall Street, which is owned by 20 people or 200 people or however you see it. Uh, You've got the mainstream media that's now down to five separate ownerships for all practical purposes. You've got the CIA, the NSA, and the Five Eyes folks, the rest of them, uh, MS5 and 6 in Europe and and on, and they are all working at the same end. Now, who is ultimately below or behind or inside all of that? You know, you can watch YouTube and you can say, well, it's the Vatican, it's the Crown, it's the Rothschilds, it's the 13 families it's the Knights of uh, Malta, it's the Knights Templar, it's the Jesuits. You, you can come up with any of those. It's the, it's the Masons. Those are the mm-hmm. ones that are most often stated. And I would say to you, it's none of them and perhaps all of them. Would, uh, you, would you agree also that, uh, for, for example, I come from the angle from a background in Wall Street, and I found that mostly like the six banks, the CEOs of the six large banks, the CEOs of 10,000 publicly traded companies have enormous influence over our politics. When you when you track back the money, who is donating uh, to our campaigns, to our you know our Senate and and Congress and uh, and presidential campaigns? Almost almost always, the money is coming from the banking industry, big pharma, big pharma, big uh, the military industrial complex companies, right? Now I I, I get oh, you yeah, I see exactly. your point I see your point that that it is it is the Rothschilds everyone likes to say it's Soros it's it's these um, deep state characters like uh, Comey and and McCabe and those guys right running around like spycraft you know but my my view is that my view and I, I don't know if you agree but my view is that if you take out the money if you take out if you take out the money players like you you find a way to deflate them. Right. Expose them. Lock them up. Lock up like, you know, Goldman Sachs, the the theft and the and the the thievery that they've gotten away with. And and, you know, and the the other banks as well. 
just lock one of them up and see what happens. Watch watch how everything changes well, very fast. It's it's go, it, 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 you no know, you have to go clear to the bottom. I mean basically if you look at it in 2008, first of all it's a fake crash, okay? And if you have any doubt about it, read Wayne Jett's book. Uh, uh, what the heck is it called? I can't. Um, or go back to 29. They're manufactured uh, crashes. They're yeah. manufactured industrial uh, processes. They're manufactured wars. And when you when you uh, you know I I listen to. Let me give you a couple of responses. I listen to AIM, the AIM folks, the intelligence media, and they think if we take out the SES that it'll fix it. Well, the SES is just like Comey and uh, uh, Rose, Rosenstein and the rest of these guys. They're mm-hmm. operatives. Those guys are the Dick Tracys of the dark right. world. Right. They're, they're, they're paid. They're, they're, they're all, paid. They're just paid they're fools. All, they're all replaceable. Right. And so, so is Congress. They're all replaceable. Right. So you've got a couple thousand people in the, in the administration the 20 cabinet offices and inside of that you've got the SES you've got all your secret uh, uh, CIA and uh, inside the Pentagon and the NSA and the rest of these guys they're all operatives those those folks are compromised uh, blackmailed or being paid fantastic sums and they're narcissistic psychopathic idiots and that's true all over the world you've got banking that the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the Federal Reserve, and 160 central banks all over the country, all over the world, that are owned by the same five or ten families and insiders that work for them. Right. You know, when Jay, we have this idea that there are more and more players, that there, that there are independent players like Rockefeller and J.P. Morgan and Carnegie and the rest of that, even going back a hundred years. Right. J.P. Morgan, that owned the Titanic and probably sank it on purpose for the Federal Reserve, for the setup of the Federal Reserve, everybody thought he was one of the richest people in the world. And, mm-hmm. of course, J.P. Morgan and, and what is it, J.P. Morgan Chase now is is uh, one of the biggest five banks in the, in the country. Well, J.P. Morgan, when he died, was 87% owned by the Rothschilds. Right, right, right. He was a straw man for them. Uh, the Warburgs, the Schiffs, the, those folks all the way back 100 years were operatives. I bet you if you go behind Jeff, Jeffrey Epstein, you're going to find the same thing. You go behind Soros, you're going to find the same thing. You go behind uh, uh, sucker faced Zuckerberg, you're, you're going to find that same source of money. Uh, uh, Bezos, is Bezos uh, getting has he been funded up how about elon musk yeah. these are guys that popped up out of nowhere uh what what's his name chuck or whatever his name is that the head that was the head of uh uh what was he head of google schmidt yeah. is that what his name was uh these yeah guys are all, okay yeah they, these are these are people talk about well who how could you control a billionaire well if he yeah. if the billion he got was from the same source and they blackmailed him and they have pictures of him lying naked with a 12 year old boy or a right, compromise girl. Right. Compromise. Yeah, they're, they're, they, they tow the mark and they get to be rich and they do. Like what do you, what do you say? What do you, what do you say to some, some jack off socialist who says a good way to deflate the billionaires and deflate the large corporations that are raping the country is to jack their taxes up to 70%. Corporate tax. Well, what you, do you say to that? Yeah, well, I, it, first of all, it won't fix anything. Uh, it, it will change the dynamics a certain part. And what you have to understand about taxing corporations, which, of course, uh, you, may, you may well do, is that when it's just like uh, what uh, Pacific Power and Gas, you know, they had this huge thing with the campfire and the rest of that, and they were negligent, and the power lines got in it, and the trees supposedly burned, which is all bullshit. Mm-hmm. But so uh, PP&G is either going to, A, file for bankruptcy, in which case everything gets re- reorganized, or they're going to raise their rates and the rate payers are going to pay it. The, the, there's no tax to the CEO or CFO or the top 10 managers who are coincidentally one of the people on the PP&G board is a Rothschild. Right. So... Um, so you're saying they don't pay tax? 
Is that what you're saying? Well, I, I'm saying it doesn't matter. I mean, we between the foundations and the rest of that, how, how much how much is Queen Elizabeth actually worth? How much is oh, the Rothschild knows? actually worth? Yeah, nobody knows. So <laughs> when when a Rothschild dies, they own countries. They own they own islands. They own you know half of London's property, and you know, it's it's it's, when, it's when not a Rothschild. Even, Right. Yeah, when a Rothschild dies, where do we read in the newspaper about how big their estate was and how it was probated and it's been divided? Right, you don't. Yeah. Well, England, Nobody England, knows. England has that system where it's a it's a social ownership. Nobody, uh, I think, property outright property ownership is only a lease for ninety nine years or so, and then it, it returns back to England. Right? Maybe we should, you know, do something like that. Not that it's working for England, yeah, but it's here's, something here's to think the about. Here's thing. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you look at the core of it, yeah. in 2008, there was a fake crash. Right. They dumped Lehman Brothers off. They probably paid off the insiders in that, or they were bad boys and they, and they weren't behaving well, so they pulled it out from under them. Why do you, think it, why do, why do you think it was fake? I mean, I, w I was there at the time, and it seemed like what happened was it was a credit default swap problem, <laughs> and they yeah, sold— they created that. That was Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs invented that market, well, tried to sell it, tried to sell yeah, it around, and they they sold a shitload of it to go, to Lehman Brothers and AIG and every City Group had it, Chase had it, they all had it, and that yeah, was Goldman Sachs was Goldman yeah, Sachs went they were short on it while they were selling it. To Correct, their, right, right, and and so did uh, what, what's the um, oh the Lion and Bear bunch? What the hell are they called? Bear Stearns. Uh, they did the same. Well, yeah. no, there was the other one. Um, Merrill Lynch did the yeah. same thing. Yeah, they all did. They uh, all they all bought it. They, but you see, that's yeah. mm -hmm. you know, it's just like the derivatives. See, they didn't pull the derivatives last time. That's another layer. Yes. Derivatives now we have two hundred ninety-eight trillion dollars or something like that. When, no, I just I guarantees. just I'm just what I'm what I'm what I'm trying to uh, understand is when you say it was a fake crash, it yeah, yeah. was no, it, it was, was a formulated, it was real. And it was, it was, <laughs> yeah. it was, there was a point where all of the, all of the major, again, banks, these are the people that I was, I, I, I hold true that if you take them down, you take down, you have an ability to get to the truth, but they were all pointing, no, they, no. Were, they were all pointing yeah. guns at each other. Mm -hmm. Well, but here, yeah, they, and they still do. And yeah. the banks that were too big to fail in 2008 are now three times larger and right. exponentially less stable and the derivative market that was uh that was i don't know what 30 or 40 trillion at the time is now 200 i'm just making numbers up but 200 it's eight times bigger than it was yeah, or six yeah. times bigger. you're right so about that the banks are about about two and a half three times larger than they were so you know so you can pull those strings anytime you want to and you say well gee there's one plot no there are 19 plots yeah, they all we have. They, they're all in competition with each other. They're all well, but no, it's bigger than that. It's bigger mm -hmm. than that. I mean, if you look deeper and below that, mm -hmm. below the banks, yeah, below Wall Street, behind all of those guys, the ones that are pulling the strings can say, "Well, we have we have a hundred years to, to work this out. We have two hundred years to work this out. Mm -hmm. we, I don't have to get it done in while I'm alive." I can hand it to my son or grandson or great son, grandson. Right. If you look at the Rothschilds, they've been doing this since the 1770s. Right. And they have systematically every 20 years or so in one nation or another or throughout the world, they pulled the rug out from everybody. Right. Every one of those, every one of those failures is blamed on a different thing. If you look at 29, it was supposedly the tariffs and the smooth rolly and the rest of that business. Mm -hmm. Uh, that that was supposedly the cause of it. but if you look at it a that doesn't make any sense and b it's something you could have fixed overnight what did they do the next year did they take the tariffs down not a bit okay what did so, they do with roosevelt they did none of it, it so so it, let me let me let me let me say this as yellow vest right how do we yes. how do we address this do we kill them <laughs> do, <laughs> as a joke well, I, but do well, we right, do we so, imprison them do we do we yeah, jump see, on their I, back I, and tackle them and 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 give them noogies? How or do we paint the you know a certain <laughs> color on their back? How do we how do we would they, do we even know how many Rothschilds there are in the world? How uh, do that, it doesn't matter. See, it okay. doesn't matter. I, mm -hmm. I don't think it is. I don't care if there's thirty Rothschilds or three thousand. It doesn't matter to me. 
and I don't care if there are still 13 families involved. Right. I don't care if the Knights of Malta or the Jesuits. It doesn't matter to me right. who the names are, what the organization. Froggy, you're there. Making five banks. Your, your phone you're drops that? out. Your phone drops out a little bit. It drops uh, every once in a while. It drops, but I, I right. hear you. You're, you're here. <laughs> yeah, a, a, a bank taking down a bank. If you look at it, Lehman's didn't help anything. It didn't fix anything. As a matter of fact, it used it was used as an excuse. But let's back up because here's the reason why the logic that you use about not to pick on you, but the multi, why taking down four or five banks won't fix it. And that is this. If you have the Federal Reserve operated by non-accountable parties of, of whom whose names we don't even know, yeah, it's not audited. No, I, right, I so agree with go, that. I agree with that. So but let's, the, the, go, yeah. let's go to the let's go to what really happened in 2008. Okay. Okay. Lehman's Brothers came out. They came in with this this uh, debt uh, swap business, and they said we need 700 billion dollars. Idiot! That idiot uh, uh, Paul. Paulson. Yeah, Henry Paulson. I've right. got this I've got this stupid three page uh, bill that you guys can pass so we can pass around seven hundred unaccountable billion dollars to the local banks and they're not gonna fix anybody. They're not gonna help anybody that's in debt. They're not gonna fix any of the mortgages. They're not gonna go after anybody that's underwater. And what's more than that, we're going to prop the banks up and we're going to give them we are going to make it right by them for every Every default that's, that uh, private parties have, and we're going to pay the banks to cover it. Now, that's that looks like how it really worked. Well, it wasn't how it really worked. All of the all of the healthcare, all of the retirement plans, the HOAs, the IRAs, and the rest of that went down by forty or fifty percent, right? Yeah. Your real estate went down by forty or fifty percent. Ten or fifteen percent of the people lost their houses. The rest of us on the blocks uh, watched our houses, basically all of our equity disappear and right. our HOAs and retirement plans and everything else. I, I was trading. I was trading. I was trading at the time. I was a, an actual. Yeah. So you. Trader. All right. So I watched the swing really happened. Mm -hmm. Here's what really happened mm -hmm. that nobody has watched. Nobody's paid attention to. And that is what really has been done since the Napoleonic Wars and Waterloo. And that is. The same bunch that made 10 to, 50, 10 to 50 times more crashing the London stock market in, what was it, 1815 or whenever Waterloo happened, right. and crashing it and then buying it at the bottom did the exact same thing in 2008. Yes. And they, out the back door, that nobody talks about, out the back door, not $700 billion went, not $7 trillion went. $29 trillion went out the back door of the Federal Reserve to five big American banks and I think three European banks, and and they did exactly what they wanted to. Now, you want to say, well, how did they get a hold of Wall Street? Well, at, at Wall Street, you know better than I do, but the number was probably somewhere between 6 and $10 trillion. Yeah, nobody knows. The, uh, it, was, it was a lot more than $700 billion. No, no, no. I'm talking about the total value of all the shares on Wall Street. Okay. Oh, that's that's oh. Um, that's that's speculatively, the fictional number is about thirty-two trillion, and okay. the banks okay. the banks in in theoretical paper money have about uh, sixteen trillion. The the, right. the top so here's, banks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's what they did. Yep. They took they took the stock market in two thousand eight and ran it from what twelve or fifteen hundred to six hundred in a day. Uh, yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, it was a free fall. It. It. it the S and P. Right, so, the S and P crashed to. So what million. was it worth at the bottom? The the lowest amount. Six trillion, ten trillion. Uh, that's. I don't know. I'd have to take out a pencil, and I, I'm well, too let's, lazy. Let's for that. use that number. <laughs> let's right. use that number. Yeah, I don't ahead. care. Let's use that number. Right. So the banks, out the back door, have twenty nine trillion dollars to play with. Right. It's dropped by half. How much did they end up buying? First of all, they consolidated banks. They uh, cross-purchased all kinds of other things. They played with the... Why did they have $29 trillion? Well, because they could buy real estate. They could buy water rights. They could buy stuff. They could buy shipping lines. They could buy oil rights all over the world. And they bought them at the bottom. The crash happened. They mm -hmm. set the crash up, dropped it so that everybody else is worth half as much. 
gave money out the back door to the big guys to, to, to do what they wished and bought up everything that was there. So every time they do this, if you look, fewer people are in the middle class, fewer people have wealth, uh, the wealth consolidates in a fewer number of people, there's more control, there's fewer corporations, there's more mercantilism and oligarchy and monopolies, there's more control of the world military industrial complex, and the middle class is smaller. And if you look from 1976 or 80 or so, the middle class is now two thirds as large as it was then and is worth half as much money. So so you're saying so if we abolish the Fed and we we take a take a harder look at the banks and the way they they do these backdoor deals, we're moving closer towards a. Uh, 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 we're, we're, we're moving over the target a little closer. Would you agree with that assessment? I, I think the target is... What is the target? You have to take down the central banks okay. and whoever is behind and owns those... Not just the Federal Reserve, uh, the London Central Bank, the Euro Bank, the World Bank, the yeah. International Monetary Fund. Those are blah, fake. Blah, blah. The, the, the World Bank and the International Money Fund, Monetary Fund, are... There, those are CIA props. I mean, we, you know, that's that's well established. Like what's going on in Venezuela right now. That that's who's behind trying yeah, yeah. to cut no, a deal for the oil is the the World Bank. It's world, but it's really a they, de- it's Washington. It's not it's not the world. It's it's a, it's the guys in D.C. Well, doing it. Washington, yeah, Washington and D.C. are just operatives for people that are much deeper than that. Sure. I mean, that's the yeah. thing that one needs to pay. When, when the War of 1812 happened, what not what is not in the history books is that the Rothschilds paid George III to, to attack the United States again because and to go back and start a second war with the United States. Why was that? Well, because in 1889 we formed a central bank and the idiot, the, the, the operative for the Rothschilds was Alexander Hamilton, who coincidentally had him an odd Broadway uh, show that trying to make him look like a hero. Well, he was a Rothschild operative. I'll put, I'll put my life on that. Maybe I have it already. And in, in, two, uh, in 1809, the central bank charter ran out and the United States refused to renew the Rothschilds to own the central bank charter. So they went to George and said, we, you know, we got to get control of, of the old, uh, the colonies. Let's go attack them again and we'll, we'll reclaim them as part of the, uh, uh, of the empire, which we, of course, own uh, through you anyway. Right. And so we attacked them. And what ended up, of course, is that the continent, the, the continent paid, borrowed money to, to wage a war against Britain. And when they got all done, they signed up for another 20 years with the central banks and in uh, 1812, and that was part of the deal. Right, right. So George owed more money to the Rothschilds, and the United States owed more money to the Rothschilds or their operatives, and both of them ended up submitting to the central banks, and it's been like that ever since. Right. The only president that we have that fully stood up to this whole process is Andrew Jackson. Right. And... Right. Uh, and uh, Andrew told him that, by God, if there was only one thing on his uh, tombstone, it was he got rid of the banks. I think what's I think what scares people the most is when you say, like, for example, in France, the idea of running the banks to freeze the banks if everybody goes. It only takes five percent, especially in the U.S., to freeze the bank. If five percent of the money comes out of the bank in 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 cash then the banks wouldn't be able to meet those deposits and would yeah yeah there's there's all kinds of there's all kinds of practical problems but let, let's assume that trump is on our side i'm not at all sure he is he rumbles about uh powell and the federal reserve and about how they have to keep the interest rate down and how they're mismanaging but i don't think he has guts enough to pull the plug Despite guys like Robert David Steele and the rest of that that say it's already happened, which is totally no, abortion. it's it's but not it's not <laughs> right, it's not happening. No, but so let's assume that yeah that we got over the target and we neutralized the core of the target mm-hmm. and that we eat, 
the first thing that we could do is a matter of, of simplicity would be to say uh, the United States government would step forward and say we give full faith and credit to all the Federal Reserve uh, values and property and, and money and savings and deposits that are in the banking system. We, we fully guarantee and support that. And over the next year, we're going to replace the reserve notes with United States currency, and we will uh, make this transition as seamless as possible. Everybody go back to work, but it's not the Federal Reserve that's running it anymore. And but how does that? Of, let me ask you this: How does that? How does that prevent? I, I hear what you're saying. I'm not quite. I'm not quite uh, fully on board with that uh, part. I'm just being honest. Be. I, I, I'm not, I'm just trying to be honest with you. But how does that? What I want to know is how do you how do you foresee that stopping large corporations like Amazon who don't pay a nickel in tax that take their thirty five billion dollars and park it in an offshore tax haven? Or well, you have, you know, or the yeah, banks that to, do it, and all they're they're yeah, all doing got, this. They're raping the country in terms of the that that. You, how do you stop that? I'm, well, you have to if you go to the source of the money. I think if you honestly went to the source of the money, and I can't prove this, but if you went to, to the source of the money, two things have to happen around it. Number one is everybody that was funded by the Rothschilds. Let's just use the, that that name, okay? May not okay. even be them. Maybe right. the Pacers, or maybe the Warbirds. Who I don't know who it is, right. and I don't think anybody else, except maybe a hundred people, know who it is. If you if it's you go Saudis. back to the source of it, <laughs> it's a Saudi yeah, Arabia. Well, they they may be, they are in on it. They got a they, lot. They got so, a lot. And and listen, so is the Mossad, and so are the Israelis. Right. But right. but Huge if you go to Amazon. Mm -hmm. You go to Amazon, you'll find that a lot of the source of that money, either the stocks are owned by the Rothschilds and the rest of them, or the money has been fed into Amazon. Uh, Amazon right now has a huge contract with the CIA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 600 grand. It's all, yeah. It's, yeah, it's all, it's all cross-fed. Uh, what, what about Apple? What about uh, Twitter? What about the, these guys? Twitter and Facebook and YouTube. Right. that we're using right now and Amazon, uh, they're all cross-fed with the government. And if you zero, first of all, if you zero out the source of the money and you trace the source of the money back to those corporations and take it away from them, basically reverse jubilee it out, you will, first of all, take 90% of it. The second part of okay. that is... I, there we agree. Your, we agree on that. We agree. You have you, to, you go second, to the root of the, the second, problem, the corporations. Go ahead. Right. You've got, you got to do it. And you have to source it all, all the way across the, the world. You can't just take out three and say, all right, we're done. You can't do that. The second thing you have to do, and this has to be done and it has to be done routinely, is that you take Amazon and you split it into five companies. You take Twitter sure. and, and put twins up. You take Facebook. Uh, you, you for, and, you, and you set up free speech, free assembly, and and uh, the the right to for printing press. So by splitting the, by the, splitting the, corporations, you're saying to reduce them in size in some way. Would you would was that a, is that a fair I, assessment? I, there you can't have monop. Number one, you cannot have monop. Right. That right. that's the first thing. Right. And so you have to break it up to at least five or ten pieces. The second, which is what we did with the belt companies. Right. You know, uh, 70 years ago, it's what we did with the oil companies at the yeah. turn of the last century. Telephones, but, electricity. But you, also, you also have to hold them down with antitrust. And then you and then what you have to do, uh, what has to be done if we're going to actually flip this over is that we have to take all of these uh, publicly uh, public forums for uh, like uh, uh Facebook and Google and YouTube and the rest of these, and they cannot do shadow banning. They cannot use their uh, algorithms uh, to play with people. They cannot shadow ban. They cannot violate fundamental constitutional rights. Yeah. And we have to drill rights into these major corporations that presume to be uh, uh, fairly and openly operating our uh, access to free speech and free assembly and the rest of that. Uh, you know, we, when the founding fathers set this up, we had 4,000 
little newspapers all along the continent. I'm making the number up, but that's what it probably was. And so anybody that had a printing press could speak their piece. Right. And the paper went out. We have to be able to do that now. And because it is constrained by a centralized internet system and it has been allowed to be monopolized, we are not going to be able to be to speak freely. And that, when you take that away, even the very concepts that you and I are sharing right now cannot be shared with anybody else. Then we're done. Right, right. No doubt. So let's 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 just spin. Uh, it's we're already at uh, like forty minutes. So I just want to let's end on this. I mean, whenever we talk, whenever I talk, I don't know about you, but when I talk about Trump or when I talk about politics or I talk about you know certain certain policies that I disagree with, it it's like a it's like it's like punching someone's mother. You know, it's like it's such a sensitive issue, especially with Trump, who people. You know, 25, 30 percent of the country really backed him and thought that he was going to uh, take on the deep state and take him down. And everything was, you know, and all that money was going to trickle down to the to the regular people and everybody was going to be fine. And I, I think that that was the and you may not you may not agree. I never was a fan of uh, Q. I do see the value. I did see the value in the educational properties of Q where he was. He was telling people about things that they may have been hearing for the first time, like they were hearing the, the you know the word deep state or the the idea of spycraft, where propaganda is used to manipulate people, and uh, exactly how these organizations work. But what what I see in Q is that it's it's it. I don't think it's connected to state in any way. I think it's more of a you know professional think tank of guys that are. You know, doing this kind of as a and I and I will say it is kind of a pacifier because when people are sitting sitting waiting for something to happen, that's where the deep that's where the the uh, the power players uh, 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 get more powerful. But if people, that's why I'm so inspired by the idea. Of finally, wow! Finally, people are putting to, to put on a yellow vest I mean they're even arguing about the color of the vest but to to put on something and get out in front of people like the French and say damn we're tired of this we're not going to take this shit anymore <laughs> we're done right so I guess right, so we got we got three pieces okay yeah <clears throat> let's let's take two first okay um, I, I started, I was very hopeful. It looked as though there may be a real connection with the Trump administration. I, I played along for about two months. Right. I got into March and I said, you know, this may not be what it looks like. And uh, I sat on it for about six weeks and didn't do anything. And when I came back in, I said, look, I don't know whether it's real or not. It doesn't matter to me whether it's real. The point of the matter is, is that it's drawing people to look at the, the list that you just covered. Yeah, uh, yeah, it did. It, it, various it, operatives, the five yeah. eyes, the industrial complex. It was the good for basic that. Basic ownership. Yeah, so I used it as a red pill. I used it as a discussion point for red pill and left it, left its source alone. The second part of it is, and this is really problematic, is that an awful lot of the Q people that are still Q people are happy to say, follow the plan. Yeah. I'm going to sit here in front of my computer I'm going to click my mouse. I'm going to go every every night or so. I'm going to go make up a big bag of popcorn, and I'm going to sit in front of the computer and pop popcorn in my mouth and hit hit my clipper clicker. Nice. And that's all I have to do to be you know a patriot. Or maybe I'll buy a Q T shirt. That that'll that's <laughs> all we need. Or maybe I'll put a sticker on. And that's going to solve. Car. That's going to solve all the problems. I, it, it won't do any of it. It won't do any of it. the set. All right, so. So my, my point about it is, and this goes to the whole vests and everything else, if you like Q and you want it, put a sticker on your vest, but show up. I right. don't care what, you know, you can, Perfect. you can put, you can put mother goose sticker right. on your vest. I don't care. Just get off your you ass know? and get out, get out well, on the street Uncle, and, and, and Uncle Remus, stand for I don't something. Care. Right, put right. something on there, you know, put the, you know, General Mills. It could you imagine, matter. no, could put, you, just for a second, imagine this, imagine the, like the the Q people, you know, like most of us, despise Hillary Clinton and the pink pussy hats and the the social warriors that are you know so lost and so troubled, right? And and then you have the those people who 
have been engineered to hate Trump, just the sight of his his yeah, fucking see, we, head. We, we right? need, we to need get, to get those get people in, to get those people in the same room is a, is quite a feat, <laughs> right? If you could do it. You know, I don't think you're going to go from one end to the other. I, I'm, I'm looking for 10 million people, and yeah. I'm looking for that core of 10 million people. Well, you've got you've got 40 million. You've got you've got you know 40. It's actually more. 40 percent of this country doesn't identify in any of the, the categories that we're talking about. Which but they, is, but they have to wake up. There, yeah. There's there. Well, they're awake. They right, woke so, up. They woke so, up. They woke up during, I'll tell you when they woke up. They woke up for, for, for Occupy Wall Street. All the things that we're talking about, or talk to, we spoke about before, about Wall Street. There's millions and millions of people that understand it. Guys like uh, Chris Hedges, you know, that spoke venomously about the, the corruption within, you know. They don't go into the, the family part of it that you're talking about, but more of a, a surfacey corporate corruption and many people knew about that. And that when that rose, the banks shut it down, you know, with all their money and shut it down. And then the other swell, you may disagree with this, but the other swell, the other waking up was really the Bernie Sanders movement where you oh, had. No, I, I agree. I right? agree. And, and, and that I was have, that was real. Sanders, and those people are Sanders still there. Yeah. I have Sanders people that, 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 that follow me and that are part of the red pill movement. And, you know, I, what I have to say about Sanders is uh, we can disagree about the functional process of getting rid of the student debt, but it has to be done because yeah. what we have is, you know, I'm not a part of it. When I graduated college and I graduated law school, my wife and I had four degrees between us, and we had two cars and a couple thousand bucks, and we didn't know any money. That doesn't happen now. And so here's the problem is that we've got millennials and X centers that are with a hundred thousand dollars of debt and no way to pay it. Right. And we it's have deleted. to fix it. It can be this deleted. Is, right. That is we mm. well we need we need to have a GI bill. And I think Sanders is on the right track. And you can say, Well, that's socialist or that's a GI a bill. You mean like a lazy a GI bill, explain. Well, you mean like a, a, a military no, right. bill? So let's go back let's go back to nineteen forty five. Right. Okay. The veterans that went into the Second World War were given the GI Bill. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the G the GI Bill was that they got free college, they got a four year free degree for having been a veteran. Right. And they went to four years of college for free and the government paid for it. We need to do some of that. Again. Well this is Sanders know, Sanders is where, Sanders and, and that uh, that wing of the whatevers are for uh, free college tuition at city and state universities. That's the that's the move. Uh, in addition to single payer universal Medicare for all, if, those two things. See, I'm not I'm not sure. I I, I look at the German system, and I, I want to get to these other subjects. But I look at the yeah. German system. A friend of mine became a maltmeister, a, a brewmeister, maltmeister, right. and he started at 15, and they branched him in Germany off to technical schools. We don't need. We don't need 40 or 50 percent of our population to have college degrees, but we do need to have them technologically trained so that they're not the choice is not between being a social worker, an engineer and a nine dollar an hour uh, hamburger flipper. We, we have to find that place in between. Let's go to the next subject, which okay. is Trump. Right. Uh, you know, I did a thing on the presidents uh, I don't know, six months ago, and I tried to figure out where Trump fit in it. And I still don't know. You know, Trump may, may Trump may be a duplicitous bad boy. That's possible. Trump may be a uh, a good guy that has been totally compromised and will never do good. Trump may be a good guy that is allowed in, in certain circumstances to do small good things, and and he may be like the Q folks believe he may be a along to keep your enemies close, you know, closer than your friends, blah, blah, blah. And, and that he's actually going to flip it. But, but here's my problem with that. My problem with that last scenario, which is the Q scenario, which is the pro Trumper, yeah. which is the pro yeah. And the pro Trumper situation, you, you, you this is a huge job. He just needs to get at, here's the problem with that. November is his deadline, November of this year, because right. the presidential, the, 
2020 presidential campaign will be, will be in full force. Uh, the Congress and everybody else will shut down in the middle of November. There'll be a Thanksgiving break. There'll be a Christmas break. There'll be New Year's right. and a campaign in 2020. So he has to tell about the 1st of November to do whatever substantive he's going to do. I don't see that. Right. And uh, short of him, I mean, we're, we're halfway through February. He doesn't he doesn't in my in my hum, humble opinion Trump has no idea who the actual target is. He's he's unless he does know and he just doesn't say it. He's playing dumb, but uh, he he seems to want to tell he seems to want to spread the idea that it is, you know, it's Clinton, it's it's Comey, it's the FBI, it's the corrupt CIA, but then he turns around and he he appoints, you know, Mike Pompeo as his uh, Secretary of State. Oh, well, I'll take William a Barr. William yeah. Barr, the former AG. They're all CIA under guys. H they're, all, they're spooks. They're under all spooks. H.W. Bush. He's got Johnny Johnny Bolton that I will I will buy a brand Warmonger. new rope for. I'll buy a brand new rope for John Bolton if right. I have the right to hate. What do you What do you think about I'll, Venezuela? What do you think about Venezuela? What's going on? I, you know, there? well, yeah. I, Venezuela probably was a viable concept. I'm not a socialist, but I, uh, it, it has been destroyed by boycotting and by the takedown from the Rothschilds and the, and the state that said they cannot exist. They are not playing our game. They, right. We don't have their central bank. We don't get to play with their oil. We don't get to control them. Take them down. We are going to. We're going to boycott them and take them down, and Trump's right in the middle of that. And it, it's a it's another sign to me that Trump's Trump's playing cards with the big boys, not yes. with us, yes. not for us, but right. for the big. Boys. That that would affect no. That would that would devastate. It's already devastating the Venezuelan people, but it's going to heat up, and they'll probably invade at some point. Get an opportunity to spend that military seven hundred billion that's burning a hole in their pocket. They need that war, you know. They need a they they always need a war to spend that military industrial complex money to get that thing going, you know. So well, you so there yeah, is you you know, at, Trump is you Trump is right Syria, in there, right? Same thing. You look at Syria. He says I'm going to withdraw, and Congress comes in, and you got little Marco Polo. What the hell is his name? Rubio. Rubio yeah, stopping the uh, the foot kisser of Sheldon Adelson, right? Uh, who came in and said we've got to stay in Syria. Well. Uh, you know, we've got we've got two state uh, people with their own dual passports, dual citizenship. We're protecting Israel and the Mossad, and we're doing it at the expense of our own military. We're doing it at a huge expense of our own taxpayers, and we are making enemies of the entire Middle East in the process. We we already have done that. I mean, why why are we in Syria if the Russians had figured out how to take ISIS out? And Assad, we don't care whether Assad's a good guy or a bad guy as long as he leaves us alone. Right. You know, if you take a look at what at what Reagan did to uh, Gaddafi, Gaddafi was funding terrorists. So what did Reagan do? He bombed one of their uh, one of their mansions, one of their. Um, right. If you send and, that, and he took out one of Gaddafi's kids, and right. he said, "All right, Gaddafi." You want to you want to take out, out the next day and said. Uh, I don't, don't, please don't do that again. If you I'll want to take angry. out Al Qaeda, just throw a bomb right at Saudi Arabia. Throw it right at that big fucking tower there in the middle of uh, Abu Dhabi, <laughs> right? And and you you know because that's who's funding it. They're funding it in in Libya. They, they they the money goes all over the place, you know, from Saudi Arabia. But that's and, and we've and we've we, we've always known that. You know, we know that we we know these things. But but then you have Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton. They take a million dollars from the Saudi prince. And then everything's okay, you know. So, you know, there is that that element. I I I mean, there is a look. There's nobody. Everybody would love to see Hillary Clinton get the firing squad. You know, there's nobody. I mean, that's I, that's seventy percent of the country, right? But we'll we'll never see that, you know, because of the the protection around these people, right? The idea of well, it's it's know, we we have to get to a place. Uh, the bankers, the bankers were not what was too big to fail. We should have, we should have rounded them up in 2008. Yeah. Uh, the criminals like Kobe and the rest of these guys, anybody that lies to Congress, ought to, you know, ought to go to jail. Thirty and years. Anybody. Thirty anybody years. Anybody that uh, that's uh, blackmailing people ought to go to jail. Yep. Anybody that's Agreed. that's uh, uh, 
defrauding folks ought to go to jail. And if we have a two tier justice system, we are screwed. Uh, anybody, anytime that you say to someone, you're too big for me to take down, you're exempt. You, you have licensed that person to do all the evil that they can get away. With. Mm -hmm. We may have another chance for a crash because it does look like the markets are unstabilizing, you know, and uh, <laughs> if it does, if it Forget does, it. if it does crash, uh, we will be in the same situation, probably worse, where right now you've got uh, Steve Mnuchin, who's another again, it's just like Paulson. And now he's you've got Goldman Sachs. it's another yeah, Goldman he's... Sachs guy sitting right next to Trump. There's no different. They'll they'll orchestrate the same kind of crash. They'll put. There's, I'm going to say to you, Mark, if there's a crash this time, yeah, it will be three to ten times worse. Yeah, it will take the systems down, and if it takes, and that's a good thing. Either, it's a good thing. Well, it, it, yeah, but here's the problem. Okay, here's the problem. If it takes down, if they take it down, if they use it to take down the country, which it, it is a manipulative tool, right. it will not just be that thing that happens. If, if you look at this as a designed system, if you look at the crash, not as a crash that takes down the big guys, but as a crash that is designed and played with to gain advantage, they can take down the energy system and put, uh, for instance, the Internet, the energy system, the electrical system, uh, gas distribution or grocery distribution or shut down the banks. They could do any one of those five if they do them all. Within three days, we'll have Mad Max. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna. I, I'm not. I'm not discounting that it would be extremely ugly and and ruckus. But it, it in in effect, I think that the. Yeah, I, I'm still very optimistic about the American people. I think that people will not loot and and shoot each other like the like the mainstream media would like people to believe, and you know, rioting in the street. I think people would be. Well, what yeah, Rather. what are you going to do, though? Yeah. It, let, me, let me just, let's take down the internet, okay? Yeah, yeah, you then you're in the, trouble, right? Right, how do we, you take down the how do we communicate? And how's, Wal, how's Walmart going to sell you groceries? Right. If you if you go to Safeway and, they're, and their computers are down for 15 minutes, they, yeah. can't, they can't sell you a bowl, a, a box of Wheaties. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's rough, I know, I know, I know what you're saying. So, it's, you go, you go two days without the internet. People are going to walk into Safeway and say, "Look, I need, I need groceries. I need milk." Well, I'm sorry, we don't have any internet. Stuff is, stuff is going to rot. Right, well, right. no. Well, I'm taking it. It's coming out here. The yeah, windows yeah. will be broken. Uh, the shelves will be emptied. Uh -huh. uh, the the hordes will show up. There'll be ten thousand people that show up at a Walmart and just gut it in in an hour and a half. And if you want to look at what happened in Venezuela and elsewhere when they ran out of food, and you watch the people standing out in front waiting for a truckload of of rice to show up, yeah, uh, you'll get a pretty good sense of how how it could be. And in these big cities, places like Phoenix and San Diego and uh, New York, uh, Philadelphia, <laughs> New York. You know, you got eight million people or ten million people scrounging around looking for Something a distribution to eat. center. Yeah, and and it's it will turn ugly. Yeah, no uh, doubt. You know, you can say I love the American people, but when they when their when their kid is starving to death, right? Uh, it, it's a different change. equity. Yes, so the equity. Everything changes when you're. You know, I once said that to a guy, right? I because I, I, I'm a vegetarian, a vegan, right? And I said to this kid, right. We're sitting down now. I'll, I'll, we'll kind of let's try to wrap it up right now. We're at about an hour, yep. right? Yep. So, so a friend of mine, right, was sitting out on the patio in the back, you know, the back of this house, right, and this deer came by, right, and and uh, and we were uh, about an hour before we were fucking starving to death, for, you know, like when you're like you you're so hungry, you 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 know you're shaking, right? We were hungry. We for some reason we couldn't get the lunch, right? And and this deer came walking by. And I said, I said, you know, I don't know how people could, could, you know, you know, shoot that animal. And, and, and he said the same thing. And then, and then we said, I think I said to him, I said, well, what if we were hungry like we were about an hour ago? We were, we were shaking in our boots. I, like we would be fighting over the gun to shoot the thing and eat it. Right. And that's, well, that's, that's precisely how people, people would get. 
you know uh, what it was uh, it wasn't St. Petersburg but it was I can't remember which it was Stalingrad that was surrounded for 270 days the people were eating wallpaper <laughs> yeah. wallpaper yeah you could eat it <laughs> uh, there were people in Haiti after that after that earthquake that were mixing milk with dirt yeah that's crazy and, and calling it a pudding I hope we don't have to go uh, there. I hope we don't have to go there to, to break out of, you know, corruption and object poverty, you know, because... Well, there, there, there is a systematic way. And what yeah. I would say about the neon vests is yep. you put 10 million people in the street and say, no, 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 we're going to reverse this out. Right. And, and what I would say to people in Congress is if you're compromised or blackmailed, you have two choices. Right. Here, you, admit, yeah. you admit it, you admit it right. and come clean or we take you out. Right. See, I think and, we I think I think that discussions like this, that's why I was excited to talk to you about this because and, and I'll be honest about uh, if this was 2 months ago, uh you would have there's a lot of people on uh, YouTube that I would refuse to still talk to at this point, but uh people that that are that were fully embracing the Q thing despite the the logic presented to them that this is likely just a you know, some kind of holding pen, just to suggest that would make them irate, make me irate, and everybody was irate. So what, I, what I'm seeing through discussions like this is that people can come together and through that dialogue, wearing the yellow vest, standing out in the street, and, 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 then, and that's how information transfers. And people say, hey, you know what? I think you're, you're, I don't agree with all of what you're saying, but I agree with a lot of it, that well, what, you you know know what, what I, mean? I say to people, yeah. what I say to people, your fundamental freedoms are at stake. Right. There you go. You put a Agreed. vest on. I don't care what. Put any color vest on you want. Put any stickers on it you want. Yeah, but I'm not uh, gonna. I'm not Harris, gonna. I'm not gonna support Trump. I hate that fuck. No, I hate no, that guy. No, fuck let him. Me, fuck finish. him. He's a racist. Let me finish. You see what I'm saying? That's let me what you got. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> no, I don't need. I don't need those people. Right. I, we need 10 million. Right. And we need. We need people to say. You know, I'm I'm pro life, or I'm pro newspaper, or I'm pro Bernie, or I don't care. Right. My answer to all of those are: sustain your freedoms, your fundamental freedoms. Sustain your fundamental freedoms. Restore them. Uh, 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 demolish the banking and monetary system that is enslaving us. And then, a year from now, two years from now, when we want to have a debate about whether or not education should be subsidized. We can have that civil right. debate mm -hmm. among us and do it as citizens of this country with our freedoms. But if we don't secure our fundamental freedoms, we won't have that discussion no matter what. Somebody else right. will tell us right. what they're going to do. 100%. I agree 100%. Unless unless people rise up from the bottom down, unless we unless we get and and 10 million is really not a is not that big of a deal. I mean, I mean, when people protested I, the Iraq War, there was a million people in every city in the country. You know, there was we, listen, millions and people millions knocked, of people. People knocked the boomers. Yeah. But the boomers, when you face it and you take a look at the last 250 years, yeah. you can. There are only two other times when there was a fundamental civil dis, uh, disobedience and and challenge. One was when. Uh, the Continental War, when we fought Britain, mm -hmm. and it was made up of young people, but it was led by people in their 30s to 70s to 80s. Uh, the Civil War, of course, that was, that was the split. The only other time that young people have, have risen, that a change has happened from the grassroots, was with the boomer. Right. 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 Full leaders actually caused the the changes that occurred in the 60s. Now, you read now that some of that stuff said, well, they were infiltrated and the free love stuff and the rest of that was all manufactured. Yeah, I, I agree part of that was probably true. Mm -hmm. But the Vietnam part of it was grassroots, ground level. I mean, there was a time in the 70s when I did not trust any of the newspapers and mm -hmm. read the Berkeley Barb and the San Francisco, Francisco Oracle which were floating around as as uh, read by a hundred people newspapers in the college campuses. We need to have that kind of grassroots yep. again, and yeah. we need to show the rest of the folks how to do it. Right. So, 
Sounds good, Frog. What a great talk, man. Thank you so much for uh, for doing this. Let's keep it going. I mean, let's just keep keep yakking about it. Wear the vest. Get, keep talking about you know, what it. I would say, yeah. What I would say to anybody that listens to this, yeah. And this, first of all, it's not about me. Okay, right, that's right. I need to be or me. I, 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 about, yeah. I I don't. I've never monetized a single video. I'm not asking for money. I'm not charging for money. I'm not doing anything else. Right. Uh, my my purpose is to be as a, as a patriot, or at least that's how I see myself. Mm -hmm. What I say to, to people, anybody that would listen, talk to the other five channels, to the five channels that you most respect, and say, look, we need to put this together. Right. And I don't care if they want to lead it, I'll join in. What, right. However it works, right. I'm on. Just put that's the damn true. vest on and start talking about it. <laughs> that's all yeah, you got to get with it. Right. Yep. Right. And if it's in New York, anything that comes, you know, through New York, anything that's in the city, I'm there. I mean, I'll cover it. I don't. I'll cover it if there's if there's me and one other vest. I'll cover it. You know. I'll, All I'll, right. So here's here's I'm my there. little pitch. Good. My little pitch is obviously I'm seething frog, and you can find me there. I've got a couple neon vest things out. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are interested in becoming a neon vest of some kind, color, kind, or description, right. Um, I have an email address, which is neat, which is neon vests, plural neon vests at outlook.com. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a domain. And when somebody wants to volunteer to help set up a website, we'll have uh, billboards up. Okay. I've encouraged people to put in the title of any email to send me their congressional district. So if you're in the Oregon's uh, fifth district, it's O R zero uh, five. Mm -hmm. Right or five. Right. Uh, if you're in the 37th district of California, it's CA37, and right. put it in the title so I can distribute it to people that are going to be in that group. And then I'm out. I mean, you know, I'm. It's not. Right. About, it's not about me. The right. people in CA37 will be their neon uh, vest group. They will formulate if they want to pick a color. I don't care if they want to put Mother Goose on their thing great and then if they want to go after the congressman there or the senator there or their city council or they pick a subject or they chemtrails i don't care go after it. go for the core take out the deep state that's the object sounds good frog all right so all right. so good talking to you and uh we'll we'll, we'll keep it we'll keep it rolling this will this will be up yep. uh, okay so if you want to reach out to froggy you got his uh so are you a doctor or final, final comment? Are you a doctor? Well, yeah, you know, I... <laughs> are you a doctor? Are you Dr. Yeah. Frog or are you just... All right, so let, so let me give you the short answer, okay? Short answer. So uh, last February or so when the Cube movement was just kicking up, everybody started listening to um, Jerome Corsi. And everybody yeah. would say, Dr. Corsi this, Dr. So you became Corsi Dr. Frog. <laughs> well, no, listen. So one day yeah. uh, he said that uh, Henry Kissinger was a white hat part of the time, and, and I got it, did a video, and I said, bullshit. Henry okay. Kissinger's never been a white hat. He's not a white hat, and I'm tired of people saying, well, Dr. Corsi this and Dr. Corsi that. I have a doctorate degree, just like Corsi does, okay. so you can call me Dr. Frog. Ah, uh, you exposed yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't, I didn't do it because I want people to call me Dr. So-and-so. You know, I'm every bit as much a doctor as Jerome Corsi is. There you go, matter, man. So. There you go. All right, peace. Peace, Mr. Frog, man. Where are you now? You're in California? Well, I'm in California. Oh, Arizona. You drop out. All right, Frog, I'm going to let you go, man. I'm going to... I'm gonna... All right, thanks so much. Thanks for the invite. All right, peace. Peace, All right, peace. Bye. Bye. Ah, what a talk, man. We got the got the magic frog man dr frog marcus conti reporting